Good evening, I'm Patrick Falk in Hong Kong. You're watching VIEW TV News, coming up on tonight's show. DAB lawmaker Holden Chow steps down from LegCo's UGL probe committee amid growing political storm, but denies wrongdoing. Pan-Democrats plan to push for CY Lung impeachment a month before the chief executive's term ends. And South Korea makes its first move under President Moon to mend strained ties with China. Seoul's top envoy met with Xi Jinping in Beijing. All right, we begin tonight with latest on LegCo's probe into Chief Executive CY Lung's payments by Australian firm UGL. The other man at the centre of the storm, DAB lawmaker Holden Chow, quit the investigating committee today just hours before its meeting. Chow said he hoped to calm political uproar, but he denied doing anything wrong. He's under fire for letting CY Lung amend committee documents relating to the probe and not telling anyone. Chow says he made the decision after considering the future work of the pro panel. Pan-democratic lawmakers vowed to keep looking into Lung's alleged interference in the panel. They also want Chow impeached. Well, Mr. Chow's decision to step down from the position of the select committee should have done days ago. Well, I am sure Lechko will have to further investigate it and rather uh, to impeach Mr. Chow. That is, of course, another matter, but that will be uh, the Democrats' responsibility. Well, pan-Democrats have decided to table a motion to impeach the outgoing chief executive. Democratic Party lawmaker James Toe said it's a matter of principle, even though CY Lung's term will end in less than two months. He hopes to secure the support of a quarter of the lawmakers joining their move in order to start the pr procedure on June 14th. Uh, with less than two months to go before taking office, Chief Executive-elect Carrie Lam has yet to nail down her team of ministers. Her campaign head, Bernard Chan, said today many strangers have volunteered to join her cabinet in the past few months. He said these people believe having a new face in the government can solve conflicts in society, but did not provide a concrete solution. Meantime, the executive councillor has backed a controversial plan to study the feasibility of developing land at the fringe of country parks for housing. He noted that country parks take up 46% of Hong Kong's land mass. Can we at least reduce 10%? Young people no longer can afford to own a home. I mean, I'm not talking about owning a home tomorrow. I'm talking about any time in their life that we have a crisis. When people start to lose hope, when the young people see there is no future. OK, to news elsewhere now. And South Korea's envoy to China met with President Xi Jinping in Beijing in a move aimed at mending strained relations between the two countries. During the meeting, Xi told Li Hai-chan he was willing to get ties back on normal track. China is vehemently opposed to the U.S. TARD anti-missile system deployed in South Korea to counter the threat from North Korea, saying it can spy into its territory. South Korean companies, meantime, have suffered a nationalist backlash over the deployment. And our Beijing correspondent, Dan Epstein, joins us here in the studio in Hong Kong for more on that story. So, Dan, to what extent does this mean South Korea is having second thoughts about the deployment of TARD? Well, it definitely is a, an extent towards their having second thoughts. Even before Moon Jae-in came into power, he talked about reviewing the third system. He said maybe South Korea were too hasty in adopting it. And obviously, this excites China, who see it as a very real threat. Now, uh, the problem is maybe uh, the fact that Moon Jae-in is t wanting to take a softer approach towards uh, North Korea means that maybe down the line there will be talks of reunification. This is also scary for China. A more unified Korea is something that China maybe doesn't want to jostle with either. So they have lots to talk about, but China is very excited that there is a leader in who doesn't want to take a simply militaristic approach towards North Korea. Well, that's certainly a delicate balancing act. Anyway, thank you very much indeed for that, Dan. Now, a mid-air encounter between Chinese and American aircrafts has prompted concerns from the U.S. military over the unsafe nature of the incident. The two planes were within 1,000 feet of one another while they were flying over waters near Scarborough Shoal. Ron Brooks has more. 
A mid-air encounter between China and the United States on Thursday in what the U.S. military called an unprofessional intercept of an American aircraft. They say it was a sniffer plane meant to detect radiation and claim it was flying in international airspace over the East China Sea. Reports came from the air crew aboard the U.S. plane, which has been used in the past to detect evidence of possible nuclear tests by North Korea. They used the word, quote, due to maneuvers by the Chinese pilot as well as the speeds and proximity of both aircraft. A military spokesman says the American aircraft was carrying out a routine mission at the time and operating in line with international law. So far, Beijing hasn't commented on the incident, but China is wary of any U.S. military activity in and around the South China Sea, where it claims a vast swath of disputed territory. A Chinese state media report says Beijing has installed rocket launchers along the disputed Spratly Islands for the purposes of defense. Eve Johnson has more. A stark reminder of tensions under the surface in the South China Sea. Beijing installing rocket launchers on a reef in the disputed Spratly Islands. A report in state media saying the goal is to keep Vietnamese military divers out. Vietnam is just one of five states challenging China's sweeping territorial claims in the area. But as Reuters' Greg Tarot explains, it could be the most likely to end up in a violent clash. The Vietnamese have many more islands than China in the Spratlys um, with military facilities on them. So the tensions, although things are relatively calm, are never far away. The Vietnamese, uh, they've kind of written the South China Sea into their propaganda script in a very forceful way. It's very hard for the Vietnamese government to back down over the South China Sea. They're fiercely independent and they have a significant military presence in the South China Sea now, including some crack Russian submarines. So to de they're trying to deter China, but that's probably the one that uh, worries people the most. As for Washington, tensions over the South China Sea are now at a low ebb. The U.S. Navy used to run patrols close to China's outposts in the area, a challenge to Beijing's claims. But so-called freedom of navigation patrols have stopped under Donald Trump. It could be because the Trump administration is wanting Chinese cooperation on North Korea. So as we know, on the trade front, on the currency manipulation front, possibly some of the regional security issues, the U.S. isn't being quite so forceful as Trump seeks Xi Jinping's cooperation. But I should add that the underlying disputes have never been solved, so they could kick off at any time. We, we need to keep that in mind. China says its military buildup in the South China Sea is purely defensive and that it can do what it likes with its own territory. All right, to the U.S. now and the latest on the Donald Trump saga. The U.S. president called the continuing investigations into Russian influence in American politics a witch hunt. And as Diane Toe reports, the newly appointed special counsel to oversee the FBI probe may turn it into a criminal investigation. Go on record here. Did you at any time urge former FBI Director James Comey in any way, shape, or form to close or to back down the investigation into Michael Flynn? And also, as you look no. back... No. No. Next question. The president, the president standing uh, firm Thursday following reports he asked now fired FBI Director James Comey to drop the probe on his former national security advisor. <laughs> Trump called Comey very unpopular, adding that he thought it would be a bipartisan decision to dismiss Comey. Instead, it's outraged lawmakers on both sides of the political spectrum. Commenting on the appointment of former FBI chief Robert Mueller to take over the investigation, there were signs Trump is feeling the heat. Well, I respect the move, but the entire thing has been a witch hunt, and uh, there is no collusion between certainly myself and my campaign, but I can always speak for myself and the Russians, zero. On Thursday, Deputy Attorney well, General Rod Rosenstein briefed senators on Comey's firing. The White House earlier released a statement saying it fired Comey based on a memo Rosenstein wrote detailing the FBI director's failings. Not so, Rosenstein reportedly told senators. He knew that Comey was going to be removed prior to him writing his memo. There were concerns also Mueller would change the nature of the probe from a counterintelligence uh, investigation into a criminal one. There was no facts laid out as to why you would change that, but appointing a special counsel has created, I think, a dynamic where Congress is going to have to be very leery of crossing into Mr. Mueller's lane because the possibility of a criminal investigation. 
That says Congress continues a separate investigation into the case over Russian meddling, a probe that snowballed itself into what Republican Senator John McCain described of Watergate size and scale. All right, in other news, a speeding car plowed into pedestrians on a sidewalk in New York City's busy Times Square on Thursday, killing one person and injuring 22. Melanie Ralph has the details. Please note some viewers may find the following footage disturbing. This is the moment Richard Rojas drove his car into a crowd of people on New York's Times Square. The incident killed an 18-year-old woman and injured 22 more. Rojas has been charged with one count of murder in the second degree, aggravated vehicular homicide and multiple counts of attempted murder. The 26-year-old is a U.S. Navy veteran who lives in the Bronx. Those who know him are surprised by his actions. They're family, they're good people. They're good, hardworking people. They're not, they're not, he's not a terrorist. If you guys think he's a terrorist, he's not a terrorist. He served his country. He loves his country. He went to school. He went to school here, um, high school and, and, and college. Witnesses said the motorist mounted the sidewalk and sped along for more than three city blocks. Eventually, the car struck a pole and stopped. Investigators are still looking into why Rojas did what he did. He has a criminal history. The commissioner will go over that in a moment. 